Hey guys, my name is Landon Huber, and I'm an illustrator, a musician, and a comic book artist. I also do surrealist painting, and welcome to my fourth art process video. In this video, I will be coloring a very awesome character named Berserkanaut, created by a very awesome person, Jeff Lafferty. The Berserkanaut is a renegade cyborg who battles monsters in order to save the innocent, the woman he loves, and ultimately the entire planet. Now, with this particular piece, I was not rolling camera while doing the penciling or the inking, so instead of showing you the entire process from start to finish, I will only be doing the coloring and final finishes to the Berserker Nut piece. However, to give you an idea, here is the pencils for the piece, which would have been step one in the process. Then, after the penciling was completed, I did the inking directly over the top of the pencils, which brought it up to this black and white stage of finishes. And that is where I will begin starting this video showing a coloring technique using alcohol markers. In order to dilute the markers a bit more for certain effects, I created a way of rubbing the pigments from the marker onto a plastic palette Then by filling this water brush with alcohol, I am able to reactivate the pigments from the palette and use them in a finer way for certain things rather than just being stuck with the strength of darkness and pigmentation that any one of the markers would have provided without the diluting. It's a fun technique and the alcohol markers provide a smoothness and blending and application that create an amazing look that is entirely their own. This artwork was created on a sheet of 14 by 17, 300 series Strathmore smooth bristle paper. So now, without any further ado, let's begin coloring. Okay, so the first thing I usually think about when starting to color any piece is the lighting. Uh, what color is the light? In this case, I'm thinking it would be cool if it felt like a, some kind of explosion or something was happening off camera, causing all this debris and smoke to fly around. So I'm picking a warm light source which uh, is yellow and first just going around and hitting all the areas where the light uh, would be hitting and of course a certain amount of that is indicated um, where and, and how I've drawn it um, but the final uh, decision making happens at this coloring stage I knew I wanted it to kind of have a little bit of that feel of the old retro comics where they used the, you know, really bold, bright colors. So, whereas if I was maybe doing this with watercolor or uh, acrylics, you'd want to be careful not to be too saturated. 
I was pretty sure that I wanted this to actually be more saturated to give that kind of feeling of the old comics. going in highlighting where the light would hit on all the little pieces of the biomechanical hand. I guess this hand is the mechanical part, the other one's more the bio part. Put them together and you get the Berserker Nut. Berserker Nut is a cool character. It's got all these little mechanical pieces and I have to admit that when I drew this originally, um, Jeff Lafferty kind of, Jeff Lafferty kind of drew, kind of drew the mechanical pieces on him a little bit in a loose style so I didn't get a like a crystal clear picture of how the mechanical parts on his legs sh should be exactly so I'm I'm still just kind of doing my own thing with it um, if, you know, if it's supposed to be different <laughs> I'm sorry Jeff um, yeah that's a cool red skull face he's got on his chest I'm going in there with Gray. Um, actually, I, I thought I was rolling camera when I was coloring the blue, but I wasn't, so um, that is already done. And then I'm on to the gray. So the gray um, is going to cover most of this biomechanical stuff. And although later I know I'm going to go in there and uh, hit it with some other hues. Um, first, I'm, I'm laying in the gray, which will be, you know, there'll be darker parts that go towards the shadows and, of course, lightening up as little reflections on the metal uh, hit certain parts. Coloring in the tannish peach skin. Basically, first, um, just giving the local color. And then leaving little... Little parts where the, the light would hit on the face to differentiate from the darker parts. Going back with the gray to hit some of the more mechanical pieces on his back. Mm -hmm. 
Usually the whole first pass of uh, colors is just, um, you need to think about it before you do it, but it's more or less just getting the colors in there. Um, in a careful way, and then, uh, you know, pushing or pulling, meaning darkening or lightening, um, as you look at it. And this purple background color, I, uh, chose it because I thought it would be a good way to make the other colors, the purples and the yellow, or the blues and the yellows pop more so now you got now you got some pop in there had I used just blue as a background color the blues wouldn't have stood out as much on the berserker nut character himself But I want this picture to pop because I want it to be you know, explosive and energetic. And also in keeping with the retro kind of old school 60s comics vibe that I was going for. Now I'm going to switch to my alcohol filled water brush because the next stuff I'm going to be doing is going to be more diluted colors. So I used that alcohol to dilute this purple color, give me a more washed out effect on my palette before applying it here. And I'm just rubbing it around to uh, fill in the areas. Because I don't want those areas to be as dark purple. So I thought about that when I was laying in the darker purples. That I would come back in and and uh, and rub it around to make these lighter purple hues. And I'm still doing it in this kind of stripe pattern because I want to kind of keep that energy in there. As you can see here, I'm squeezing the alcohol from the brush and it drops into the palette so I can reactivate the pigments. Alcohol dries pretty fast, so you gotta sometimes pick up the pigments from the plastic palette. Go to town.
it's starting to get there. I've switched over to my yellow diluted alcohol color. Because even smoke catches light. And so that's what I'm indicating here. As you can see, I'm continuing to have a, a little bit of that yellow, um, the not so yellow, diluted yellow, which hits the smoke a little stronger near the right side, but it still trails off the light, kind of hits some of those stones and things on the ground on the bottom left. Now I've switched to an orange. To again get the fire feeling as though some kind of explosion has happened just off camera. There's also a part of my brain that when I look at a picture, I think, um, what color should I have in there? Should it be orange? Should it be red? Purple? Yellow? Blue? Of course, the knife should have red. The knife should have red. Although, I suppose because uh, Berserkana is a monster killer, the blood could be any color. It could be green, purple. Um, but actually, uh, for the picture itself, those weren't the colors I wanted to use or that I felt would harmonize best with the other colors in the picture. Looks like the blood is red. And now you can see I'm just going in there with a very diluted red, pinkish color, and uh, shadowing in parts of the smoke. Again, it's supposed to be like an explosion, so those those colors seem right to me to be in there. And now I'm going in adding a little uh, shadows of blue. Anytime you do a picture um, there's a kind of secret. And the secret is that if you have warm highlights then you want to have cool shadows and also vice versa if you have cool highlights it's a good idea to have warm shadows uh, what it does is it kind of harmonizes the picture together and it creates like a, uh, a color um, temperature equilibrium within your picture and uh, it just visually is going to look better and also um, with color you know if you just use your local value and then just do darker tones of that 
um, it's gonna look a little bit monochromatic. So at this point, uh, I'm really starting to work out the fine details. Um, you can see I'm adding some cool blues to that shadow down there. And that just juxtaposes good with the oranges and reds just behind it. So it's almost like you your eye goes to the hot part and then it can cool down and then hot and then cool. It's just visually stimulating and interesting. If the entire picture was hot, I suppose uh, if you wanted that effect, that, that could work, but, you know. For me, in, in general terms, I like to, to heat, heat up and then cool down. Visually, that is. Huh. But I guess physically too it's nice, like on a hot day to have a nice cool glass of water or on a cold day to have a nice warm drink. And so to sum it all up, it just works. it isn't until you're almost reaching the end of an illustration that it starts to really come together. It's just that last 10%. You gotta keep that concentration going and make a lot of decisions about what to keep or what to change at that point those are important decisions and here I have uh, gone to a um, an acrylic white to uh, add some little highlights on parts um, so I guess you can say even though predominantly this was colored with marker I'm not opposed to doing touch-ups with a little acrylic in there
now finally we're at the stage of the final details. When my eyes bounce around the entire image and I add uh, little hits of tone or uh, color in little places where I feel it needs it. And I'm, my eyes are literally bouncing around the entire picture at this point. And I'm switching between brushes and colors frequently at this point until I ultimately reach the final conclusion. finished. Wow, he, he looks pretty intense, but I'm pretty sure he has his reasons. And also, Jeff Lafferty always drew him with such an intensity. So I hope that came across in my rendition of his amazing character. Put him in the finished pile. For those of you who haven't already, I recommend heading over and subscribing to Jeff Lafferty's YouTube channel. And I will leave a link in the description. And while you're at it, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you like the content, please leave a comment below and share the video with your friends. For more information about me, for links to my artworks, or if you want a commission, Please see the description below. And I want to say a final thanks to Jeff Lafferty for creating and giving the world this awesome new character, the Berserkernaut. Thanks, Jeff. And for those who watch this video, always remember be creative. So until next time, bye for now. See you guys.